Good morning and welcome to this circuit covenant service. Normally we would share in our covenant service in our own churches with our own congregations, but today we share in this service online. We are gathered in the presence of God. Some opening words. On this new day, in this new year, we gather. On this new day, in this new year, we pause. On this new day, in this new year, God is. God was. God will always be. Light shines in the darkness. The new day begins. And we, God's people, praise God's new day. We join in singing, come, now is the time to worship. Let us pray. Good news, God, when you promised Abraham a son in old age, Sarah responded to the gospel with laughter. When you promised Moses that you would deliver your people from slavery, he responded to the gospel by asking, who am I and who are you? When you promised Mary a son called Jesus, she responded to the gospel by saying, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. When you promised the disciples the coming of your spirit, they responded to the gospel by waiting in prayer. When you promised Paul that your grace was sufficient, he responded to the gospel by finding contentment in weakness and hardship. Good news, God. Make us laugh, make us wonder, make us submit, make us wait, make us content. Give us new life, give us identity, give us Jesus, give us your spirit, give us grace. Amen. And a prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, take what we are, flawed though it may be, and use it in your service. Take what we say and do with all its blemishes and use it to bring a little light into the darkness of our world. Through your grace, accept our imperfect discipleship 
and work through us to share your love and to make known your goodness. To the glory of your name. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Morning Andrew. Morning Rachel, are you okay this morning? Did you like that story about Jesus being baptised? My friend Susie's got three budgies. One's yellow, one's green and one's a sort of bluey colour. And I know this man down our road. He's got a real parrot. It says, how you doing? How you doing? Hang on a minute, Rachel. We seem to have entered some sort of parallel universe. I was asking what you thought about Jesus' baptism, and you're telling me about budgies and parrots. Oh, well, it made me think about them because there was a bird in that story, and I really like birds. Right. You mean the dove. I think I know where this is beginning to fit together. Well, the thing is, Andrew, I like the story, but could you tell me what it means? Because I'm a little bit confused. Don't worry, Rachel. Why don't we go through it one bit at a time? Can you remember what happened first? Well, didn't Jesus go for a dip in the water, in the river? I hope he had his trunks on. <laughs> well, that's right. But the dip in the river, that was a really important sign that he was ready for action. Ready to do what God wanted him to do. It was showing that Jesus was ready to follow God's instructions for his life. Can you remember what happened when he came out of the water? Wasn't there a really bright spotlight on Jesus? as if it was coming from heaven, and a booming voice. Absolutely, Rachel. It was God's voice showing how much he loved his son, Jesus. He was also saying that as Jesus had promised to follow God's instructions, so God would surround him with love. I remember the last bit. It's the bird bit. You're spot on, Rachel. The dove. A sign of God's Holy Spirit, God's power, which was then able to help Jesus to do all that God wanted him to do. God did make him do some pretty tough things, didn't he? I mean, making people better, feeding thousands, helping the poor and needy. I expect Jesus was glad of that bird. Oh, I mean the Holy Spirit. I expect he was. And you know, it's the same for us today. If we, like Jesus, promise to work for God and to follow his instructions, then God is really pleased with us and surrounds us with his love. 
and he gives us his Holy Spirit to help us and give us his power. And then we can do amazing things too. Thanks, Andrew. That was great. Must be off though. Where are you going? I think they had a budgie for sale in the pet shop. Bye, Rachel. Good to see you. Last January, many of us would have shared in a covenant service in our own churches. We would have shared in those words which have been part of the Methodist tradition since its early days. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, felt it was good to have opportunities to recommit ourselves to God and the covenant service is one of those. We remember God's covenant promise to us, but we also recommit ourselves to serving him and being in relationship with him and each other in the coming year. So this is a covenant prayer that we would have prayed this time last year and that we will pray again today. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I endure. When there is work for me and when there is none. When I am troubled and when I am at peace. Your will be done when I'm valued and when I'm disregarded, when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. When I prayed that prayer in January 2020, I could have no idea what the year would bring. I had no idea how much I and others would have to endure, how my normal work stopped and nothing familiar took its place, how often I would feel troubled and struggle to find fulfilment, that there would be times when I felt I had nothing. I knew none of this. Yet if I had done, would it have changed whether or not I said the prayer? Surely, Stepping into an unknown future is exactly the reason why the prayer is so significant and important. In our Bible reading, Jesus is stepping out into an unknown future. He's taking the step of being baptised at the beginning of his public ministry. This is his time for saying that he was open to wherever his ministry would lead that he was committing himself to what lay ahead, that he would take whatever came, both the joys and the challenges. Sarah and I have been blessed to have a few holidays in the Alps. We love the mountains and enjoy the beautiful walks and the scenery. There are lots of popular places for paragliding and we've sat and watched as people take off from high in the mountains and glide through the air in what must be an exhilarating and wonderful experience. I say that as if I would enjoy it. I'm not sure I would as I'm frightened of heights, but it's still wonderful to see them set off. And it's interesting to note that many people partake in what's called tandem paragliding. Someone new to the experience is strapped to someone who is experienced and together they run off the edge of the mountain and fly into the sky. They don't do it alone. They don't step out into the unknown on their own. As Jesus comes up from the waters of baptism, he's reminded that he doesn't face the future alone. First, the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a dove, the Holy Spirit of God. Then he's given the assurance of his father's love as God says, this is my beloved son in whom I delight. What wonderful words. Jesus steps out into the unknown, but he doesn't do it alone. Our future continues to be uncertain. Things are very challenging both in our country and around the world. It's not always easy to see the hope and the promise and the purpose in all the difficulties that we face. 
Yet surely that makes the covenant prayer all the more significant. It's a prayer that reminds us that since the first days of, God promise, of God's promises in the Old Testament, God has journeyed with his people. God has offered reassurance and been present with them. In times of deep trouble, he's wept with them. In times of joy, he's rejoiced. It's a reminder that God isn't some far off distant figure. But God is a constant companion on the road who shares our lives, our hopes, our loves, our fears. It's easy to look back over the last year and see all the negatives. And yet, as I reread the covenant prayer, I'm reminded of God's presence and companionship on the journey. Life and work may have been different, but it's brought its own fulfilment. There have been troubling times, but also a sense of God's peace. There have been struggles, but also encouragement, value and appreciation. There have been times when I felt I had nothing, but also times of blessing and joy. I hope the same has been true for all of us, and that as we renew our commitment to God, we do so not simply by reciting a set of words, but by feeling the meaning of the words that we say. And that as we commit ourselves to God, so we are also aware of a God who commits himself to us. Our God who blesses us with the gift of his spirit. And our God who says, you are my beloved child in whom I delight. As we think about stepping out into the unknown of 2021, I want to end with the beginning of a famous poem by Minnie Louise Haskins called The Gate of the Year. A reminder that we set off into the unknown, but we do so hand in hand with God. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Amen. My shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust.
Loving God, we offer these gifts as a small way of thanking you for all you have given, as an act and as an outward expression of all we want to give to you in return. We offer with them ourselves and our life together, our prayers and our worship, our words and our deeds, our living and our loving. We bring ourselves in grateful praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to the part of our service where we share in our covenant together. Some words of introduction. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power, and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant, which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, Others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. So we say together, I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure, when there is work for me and when there is none, when I am troubled and when I am at peace, your will be done. When I am valued and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing, I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. As we have entered this covenant, not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one, that the world may believe. 
inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Establish justice and peace among all people. Have compassion on all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who've entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray in silence for our own needs and for the needs of others. Lord, our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers. And you've promised through Christ our Lord that where two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world, grant that we may truly know you. And in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a final blessing. Beloved, forgiven and cherished, may you go in peace. Go in the knowledge that you are a treasured member of God's family, a companion with Jesus along life's journey, and forever accompanied by the Holy Spirit. In the name of the three in one, we go. Amen.